Well, there are mounting calls now for the Biden administration to curb Iran's bad behavior. This in the wake of an assassination attempt on author Salman Rushdie right here on U.S. soil. Iran's justifying the attack in a statement saying, quote, regarding the attack against Salman Rushdie in America, we don't consider anyone deserving of reproach, blame, or even condemnation except for Rushdie himself and his supporters. The attack came just days after the intelligence community revealed that Iranian government plots to kill former Trump cabinet officials. Our next guest is an Iranian-American journalist who says Iran has also set its sights on her. She details her scary encounter in her Wall Street Journal op-ed titled, Iran Tried to Kill Me on American Soil. Joining us now is Masi Alinajad. Uh, Masi, so the intelligence community confirms that Iran had plotted to kill uh, the former national security advisor, the former secretary of state. You'd know something about what John Bolton and Mike Pompeo are going through. Tell us about your experience. Uh, I, I cannot even believe that we are talking now in 21st century that another regime were trying to kidnap, assassinate uh, U.S. citizens on U.S. soil. I myself being the target of the Islamic Republic last year when the FBI actually announced that and the Department of Justice in America announced that they stopped the kidnapping plot. I thought I'm going to be safe. But again, just two weeks ago, the FBI arrested a man with a loaded gun is his car in, in, in front of my house. So we have some footage I, of that, I believe. We could put it up yeah. so our viewers can see him. And for me, it was, sh it was shocking when I heard that, uh, when I heard the terror attack on Salman Rushdie, Immediately, it just came to my mind that there, there's been a fatwa 30 years ago. The Khomeini, the leader of the Islamic Republic uh, of Iran, issued the fatwa against Salman Rushdie. The current leader of the Islamic Republic, Khamenei, repeated the fatwa three years ago on Twitter. And guess what? The professor of Oberlin College, former ambassador at the United Nations, uh, which for the Islamic Republic, who actually now lives in America. Mm -hmm. He promoted the fatwa against Salman Rushdie. So all these created a foundation of Islamic terror. So for that, Iranian people are furious. They're all condemning the terror attack on Salman Rushdie. But uh, the Islamic Masi, Republic sorry is to interrupt. I just, what do you mean by that? Because you've said that before, that these fatwas from the Iranian regime create the foundation for Islamic terror. What do you mean? I mean that the, when you go to the page of the person who attacked Salman Rushdie, you see that he put the picture of Khomeini, Khamenei, those who promoted, who issued the fatwa. So he didn't yeah, do it. Like many journalists yeah, in the West, they say that with the motive behind this terror attack is not clear. It is clear for many of us who knows the Islamic Republic and lived under fatwa, under Sharia laws, under the Islamic Republic threat. Assassinating is in the uh, DNA of the Islamic Republic. I mean, I'm sure that you invited me to talk about my experience, but I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have any fear. I'm not scared of my life. I don't want to die. Don't get me wrong. I am scared of the free world, the democratic countries who are watching the Islamic Republic assassinating, killing, murdering, kidnapping innocent people on, the, on Western soil. Like yeah. right now that I'm talking to you, German citizen Jamshid Sharmat was kidnapped and now he's in Iran to be executed. But so, Masi, how would you like to see the Biden administration respond to these extrajudicial killings and assassination attempts here on U.S. soil? So simple. It's not too much to ask. I want the U.S. administration to uh, see this as a, as a bipartisan issue and do not bury human rights under nuclear deal. I, imagine it was not me. Imagine it was, I don't know, Lady Gaga or relative of President Biden. What would they do? They just keep silent? I mean, imagine it's someone... I'm going to tell you, the engine of the Islamic Republic, the murderers, the killers, if they need to take blood, they don't care whether you belong to Republican Party or Democrat Party. They don't care whether you're left or right. The Islamic Republic kills Americans anyway because they hate America. So right now that I'm talking to you, I want the U.S. government to understand that British citizen, uh, U.S. citizen, um, Swedish citizen, German citizen, French citizen are in prison and being used like bargaining chip. So get the uh, allies of the United States of America, the European countries united, and ask them to downgrade 
their diplomatic relation to Iran until the day the Islamic Republic released all these innocent political prisoners. Now I'm talking to you that the family members of the Iranian protesters who got killed are in prison. Just last week, Iranian regime brought four women on TV to denounce themselves and to denounce me. Every single word that I'm saying here, I don't know what's going to happen to my mother, to my brother, to my family inside Iran. So I risk my life because I have a freedom here. And I, I, mm -hmm. I, I want to live in a free country without fear, without being like followed by FBI every day telling me that, you know, you have to watch your back, you have to be careful. I left my country to be uh, free and safe in America, and I deserve to have a normal life. Well, Masi, um, we wish you the best. We hope that you do stay safe, and we hope that you come back and talk to us again soon. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.